Welcome back to Gruber Motors. This week, we're going to show you inside of a rear drive unit on one of our Model S fleet cars. This process required placing it up on one of our lifts and disconnecting all the necessary high voltage cables and suspension components. Once the drive unit was off the car, we carefully inspected it and realized there was a lot of grunge and dirt that needed to be cleaned off before we opened it up. So we took it out to the back of our shop and started off by spraying it down with brake cleaner, which took a while. After that, we shifted it over to our power washer station to finish the cleaning process. When it was finally ready for disassembly, we connected chains at certain anchor points along the drive unit and measured them to their exact lengths and cut off the excess chain. Before we could lift it, we needed to remove the front and rear gearbox mounting bolts. But after that, it was time to hoist it off with our forklift, being careful and making sure it was balanced when lifting. We realized before lifting out the drive unit that it was probably a good idea to leak out and drain the coolant from the coolant manifold. After the coolant was completely leaked out, it was time to prop up the drivetrain motor and hoist it out. We then placed the rear subframe off to the side Set the drive unit onto our custom pallet, put the chains off to the side, and ratchet strapped it down. We removed all of the bolts on the main drive inverter, and then took off the void stickers on the side. We also made sure to take off the 12 volt logic connector. Inside of the drive inverter, there are two digital signal processors, or DSPs, which control the motor, monitor the health of the drive unit system, and process the driver requests. The two DSPs, along with the field programmable gate array, can be reprogrammed over the CAN bus interface. We then started to remove the bolts from the gearbox. This also required a chisel to pry apart the adhesive. Once we finally opened the gearbox, we realized we needed to go back into the inverter cover and remove the temp sensor cable to take off this drive unit half. Once we exposed the gearbox, it was time to remove the drive shaft seal on the differential bearing. Then we removed the ring gear and then re-propped up the motor. After that, we moved on to the removal of the coolant manifold and pulled the coolant pipe to the side and then pulled out the rotor cooler. The motor side cover needed to be removed along with the encoder ring. We could already tell there was a lot of water damage by the rust on the side cover. We then pried out the rotor and realized there was a lot of rust on the rotor and inside of the stator. There was some serious damage done to the rotor from the rust and the rotor bearing was hard to rotate. After further inspection, we found the stator 
may have sustained too much rust damage to repair successfully. We were a bit curious and found that the rotor was exactly 60 pounds when weighing it. We propped out the intermediate shaft gear, and the bearing was good on that. We also pulled the rotor gear and found the bearing was great on that as well. Our tech attempted to brush off the rust inside of the stator, which required a decent bit of effort and elbow grease. He also power washed the other parts and cleaned off any bits of rust on the smaller parts. After a final brush and vacuuming up the dust, it was time to put everything back together and test it all out. The gears were working well. We then needed to reseal the drive unit halves with our gasket sealant. We fed the temp sensor cable back through and put the drive inverter back together. Now, it was time to test out the car. Thank you so much for watching our videos and please subscribe to our channel.